As smoke and flames engulf the cabin of the number 50 Ford, Joe Gibbs racing Toyota Camry. Ty Gibbs just experienced a scary moment of his life. This occurred during the NASCAR Cup Series Bush Light Clash practice session at the LA Memorial Coliseum on Sunday. But what caused his car to catch fire? And did Joe Gibbs Racing have any say in the matter? So, Mascarians don't go anywhere as we have more to find out. But before we begin, do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. The positive news is that the fire that prevented Todd Gibbs from running a qualifying lap may not be connected to the fires that occurred in NASCAR's next-gen car the previous year. But why did that happen? Everyone in the NASCAR community dreads the day when the sport suffered its first deadly accident since Dale Earnhardt died in 2001. The way things are going, though, it is possible that a fire will be the source of the sport's next catastrophe. And it is possible that there is a new cause behind an issue that has occurred in the past. Under situations that were only somewhat stressful, Ty Gibbs' automobile began to fire. Ty Gibbs was putting in some quick laps during his second practice session for the Bush Light Clash in Los Angeles on Saturday. This was Ty Gibbs' first time competing in the Joe Gibbs Racing Cup Series. The driver of the number 54 Toyota was the 2022 Xfinity Series champion and the grandson of the team owner when he was forced to escape out of the car as flames rushed up through the interior and smoke filled the cabin. The car had been the sixth fastest in the session. Gibbs issues started during the first practice of the day when he noticed some small smoke in the cockpit. Despite this, he was still able to finish the session with laps averaging somewhere between 60 and 65 miles per hour. The second occurrence, on the other hand, represented a significant increase in severity and resulted in the waving of a red flag on the track at the Los Angeles Coliseum while firefighting crews put out the blaze. Instead of switching to a backup vehicle, the crew pulled the damaged vehicle back to the work area located outside the stadium in the hopes that they will be able to make the necessary repairs in time for qualifying. Ty Gibbs did not keep his predecessor's vehicle number, but one has to question if he inherited the hardware or at the very least the karma from Kyle Busch's number 18 Toyota. Busch's car was forced to withdraw from early playoff races at Darlington and Bristol with blown engines which occurred as he was leaving Joe Gibbs racing in the fall of last year. In this particular instance, the problem appeared to be with the undercarriage, as opposed to something that was happening under the hood. During the off-season, NASCAR redirected the exhaust so that it went through the rocker panels and added mufflers. Alterations were also made to the general layout of the rocker boxes. The JGR team had most likely identified the offender by late Saturday night, but by that point, the damage, both literally and figuratively, had already been done. In the process of making repairs, NASCAR concluded that the crew made alterations that were not allowed, which prevented him from going through qualifying. Because of this, Gibbs will start at the rear of the pack in the qualifying heat he will run on Sunday. There were a total of nine cars competing in the heats, but only five of them advanced to the final. Gibbs will not have a lot of time to make up the necessary spots, and it is possible that he could end up having to qualify through one of the last chance competitions in order to move on. Uh, I don't really know we're looking at it right now, but we have a very fast Monster Energy Camry TRD. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to be out here in LA. It's really cool. The track is really cool. And, you know, I feel like we have a lot of speed. Uh, so, you know, it just definitely sucks to catch on fire, but that's part of it. Um, you know, I just want to say uh, thank you to Monster and everybody that's been a part of this thing. And we're going to go see what we can do. But why, throughout the entirety of the first season of the next-gen automobile series, fires were a problem? Since NASCAR introduced the next-gen car in the previous season, the Cup Series has been plagued with fires similar to the one that Ty Gibbs experienced on Saturday. Tire dust continually gathered near the exhaust and burned, throwing smoke and occasionally even flames into the cockpit. This occurred multiple times. It's possible that this wasn't the exact issue this time around since the exhaust might have become dislodged instead. If the issue had been one of engineering, then it's possible that additional vehicles could have been affected. What are your thoughts on the issues with the next-gen car? Let us know in the comments section below. And also, do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for more updates.
whatever the case may be. Fires have evolved into more than simply a simmering problem, pardon the pun, during the past few years. The number 31 Chevrolet, driven by Justin Haley, caught fire in the pits during the race at Kansas in the middle of May. After that, the issue appeared to primarily affect Ford vehicles, as it hampered Joey Logano and Chris Boucher at Indianapolis at the end of July and then Chase Briscoe two weeks later at Richmond. When Kevin Harvick's number 4 Ford caught fire three weeks later at Darlington, causing him to scramble to the infield, NASCAR had no alternative but to publish statements confirming a commitment to safety. It is a valid question to ask whether some of that attention was diverted because of the injuries sustained by Kurt Busch and Alex Bauman, which turned concussions sustained in crashes into a huge problem as the season came to a close. In the event that there are other fires in the following weeks, NASCAR will be subject to the scrutiny of both its commitment and its level of expertise. Now let's get to know about the NASCAR Cup Series race results for the clash at the Coliseum. The results of the opening race of the NASCAR Cup Series season show that Martin Truex Jr. was victorious in the exhibition race known as the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum. Truex led the race for the last 25 laps. The 2017 NASCAR Cup champion immediately rebounded from a winless 2022 season in his number 19 Toyota by winning the NASCAR exhibition season opener for the first time. The Joe Gibbs Racing Team celebrated this victory as their driver won the race. It is JGR's 11th clash victory, giving them the lead in the series. Second place went to Austin Dillon and his teammate Kyle Busch, who was driving for the first time with the Richard Childress Racing No. 8 Chevrolet, finished second. Both Alex Bauman and Kyle Lerun finished in the fourth and fifth positions, respectively. Tyler Reddick finished in sixth place. During his first race driving for Stuart Haas Racing in the number 41 Ford, Ryan Preece led a race-high 43 laps but was ultimately relegated to seventh place because of an apparent electrical issue. The remaining three drivers in the top 10 were Ross Chastain, Denny Hamlin who also drove the number 11 Toyota and led 26 laps, and William Byron. Eric Almirola started the race in the pole position and led the first 16 of the race's 150 circuits. There were no pit stops during the race, and it was divided into two halves of 75 laps each. The race was slowed down by 16 yellow flags, which is an increase from last year's total of five, with 12 of those being in the final 75 laps. The stated distance did not take into account any laps completed in yellow. Baba Wallace led for 40 laps, but he ended up finishing in 22nd place because Dylan pushed him into a late spin. The grid for the main event of the clash at the Coliseum was reduced to 27 cars after a series of preliminary heat races and qualifying competitions. In addition to Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Corey LaJoy, and Harrison Burton, drivers Brad Keselowski and Chris Buescher of Roush Fenway, Keselowski Racing did not progress to the next round for the second year in a row, and other drivers like Harrison Burton were also eliminated. What do you think will Ty Gibbs be able to win in the upcoming season? Let us know in the comments below. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. So, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more of our videos on NASCAR updates. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.